Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Day by Eli Weisel. So, this is the third in the trilogy. It starts with Night, which is non-fiction, and then goes into Dawn and Day, which are both fiction novels, but they do still cover kind of similar themes. I previously buddy read Day, no, Dawn, and I've got a review of that linked below. I buddy read that with Alex Black, and I buddy read this one with her as well. Uh, I'm going to read you the blurb, and then I'm going to give you some top-line thoughts, and then I'm going to investigate a few of my tabs. So, the blurb. Day, previously titled The Accident, is the powerful conclusion to Eli Weisel's masterful Night trilogy, which begins with the unforgettable memoir Night and the acclaimed novel Dawn. Struck and gravely wounded by a cab in Times Square, the novel's anonymous narrator, a Holocaust survivor, begins a profound and painful journey through his past, facing again and again the question, is it ever possible for Holocaust survivors to create new lives for themselves without remembering their old ones? A profound confrontation with the burdens of memory, Day explores a random catastrophe, the temptation of self-destruction, and their connection to the larger tragedy that befell an entire people. A new preface by the author reflects on the enduring questions raised in Day and on the novel's place in this extraordinary trilogy. So, I guess my problem with this one is that Night was obviously really moving and fascinating because it was a non-fiction account. Dawn was really fascinating because the actual storyline itself was very gripping and also it had these deep philosophical questions. Day, I didn't really feel gripped by the storyline as much. It did still have a lot of these questions so and it did also have a lot of the beautiful writing which is kind of impressive because it was translated from French but uh, it was certainly the weakest of the three books I think. So I'm going to go through and take out some of my tabs to uh, I guess show you why I think that. So I want to start just with the opening line of the opening chapter. The accident occurred on an evening in July, right in the heart of New York, as Kathleen and I were crossing the street to go to see the movie, The Brothers Karamazov. And I just thought that was interesting because that's James Lightfold's favourite book. James Lightfold being my fictional detective in my detective series. So I thought this was interesting. He's reflecting back to his time in the concentration camp. So it says, We ordered two hamburgers and two glasses of grapefruit juice. Eat, Kathleen said. And she looked up at me pleadingly. I cut off a piece and lifted it to my mouth. The smell of blood turned my stomach. I felt like throwing up. Once I had seen a man eating with a great appetite a slice of meat without bread. Starving, I watched him for a long time. As if hypnotised, I followed the motion of his fingers and jaws. I was hoping that if he saw me there in front of him, he would throw me a piece. He didn't look up. The next day he was hanged by those who shared his barracks. He had been eating human flesh. To defend himself, he had screamed, I didn't do any harm, he was already dead. When I saw his body swinging in the latrine, I wondered, what if he had seen me? He uh, references the Dylan Thomas poem here. He says, a poem by Dylan Thomas, always the same one, kept coming back to me about not going gently into the night, but to rage, rage against the dying of the light. We have this little quote here. Um, After hesitating a moment, he had asked her softly, do you love him? Yes, Kathleen whispered. In that case, there are good reasons not to lose hope. Love is worth as much as prayer, sometimes more. Then Kathleen burst into tears. Well, I would agree. I would argue that love is always worth more than prayer, but, you know. We have this sentence here which really bugged me. Every time my father scolded me, she would intervene. Fathers are like that, she'd explain smilingly. I just hate words like that. Smilingly. No. Don't use smilingly. This was also another really sort of fascinating insight into, um, you know, the Holocaust, I suppose. There were about ten in the bunker. Night after night, they could hear the German police dogs looking through the ruins for Jews hiding out in their underground shelters. Schmuel and the others were living on practically no water or bread, on hardly any air. They were holding out. They knew that there, down below in their narrow jail, they were free. Above, death was waiting for them. One night, a disaster nearly occurred. It was Golda's fault. She had taken her child with her. A baby, a few months old. He began to cry, thus endangering the lives of all. Golda was trying to quiet him, to make him sleep, to no avail. That's when the others, including Golda herself, turned to Schmuel and told him, Make them shut up. Make him shut up. Take care of him, you whose job it is to slaughter chickens. You'll be able to do it without making him suffer too much. And Schmuel gave in to reason. The baby's life in exchange for the lives of all. He had taken the child. In the dark his groping fingers felt for the neck. And there had been silence on earth and in heaven. There was only the sound of dogs barking in the distance. Bleak, man. I also thought this was interesting in terms of, I guess, of his culture, but for me it's a bit like torturing children by, like, scaring the crap out of them, you know? But anyway, uh, he says, I told her, as a child I lived with the perpetual fear of forgetting my mother's name after I died. In school, my teacher had told me, three days after your funeral, an angel will come and knock three times on your grave. He'll ask you your name. You will answer, I am Eliza, the son of Sarah. Woe if you forget. 
a dead soul, you will remain buried for all eternity. You won't be able to come before the tribunal to know if your place is in paradise or in hell with those who waited too long before repenting. You will be condemned to wander in the sphere of chaos where nothing exists, neither punishment nor pain, neither justice nor injustice, neither past nor future, neither hope nor despair. It is a serious thing to forget your mother's name. It is like forgetting your own origin. Remember, Eliza, the son of Sarah, the son of Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Didn't it say on the back? An anonymous narrator. He's called Eliza. Anyway, that was the last tab that I wanted to share with you guys. Overall, I do think this was the weakest in the trilogy. I gave it like a 3.25 out of 5. It wasn't terrible. It was just a bit below what I was hoping for, to be honest. And yeah, I don't think... I just don't think Night, Dawn and Day should be related. I mean, this was previously called The Accident. Which kind of shows that he actually had to change the name of the novel just to make this trilogy or whatever. It's a bit weird. It seems a bit like a cash grab. But I kind of understand why you would do it. I mean, it makes sense financially and marketing-wise. It's just a weird creative decision, I suppose. But yeah, 3.25 out of 5. Thanks a lot to Alex Black for buddy reading this with me. And uh, there we go. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.